Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with Joe Grabus. He's the owner of his own company, the Grabus Institute uh, for Continuing Education, also a genealogist, uh, also quite uh, the expert when it comes to (laughs) real estate and land ownership and the title industry. He knows a lot, and he's joining us here today. It's continuingeducationnj.com. That's his website, and we want to welcome you back to the show. How are you? All right. Pretty good. How are yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. The man with many hats who lives in New Jersey, but helps people all over the place. How, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, it, you, that's a good explanation. I have been doing, I have done a lot of things over the last 45 years of, of my career in real estate. Uh, I owned a surveying company. I, I did it. I was a title searcher. I, I do a lot of different things, uh, and I try to bring all that information to bear when I'm out teaching, which I do a lot of, and uh, that this podcast allows me to share some of that information with the folks. Great. And uh, for today's conversation, I know we're talking specifically uh, for the state of New Jersey, water rights, uh, right? So we're focusing on issues and concerns for property owners along the Jersey shore uh, and uh, those type of waterways. Uh, Many people, you say, dream of owning a house, right? Of course. Uh, And uh, a lot of them, I mean, today, unless you have the money, a lot of that's inherited down from the family, generation after generation. And there's also many risks, you say, in fulfilling that dream. Could you talk a little bit about New Jersey itself? You say there's a lot of restrictive regulations on the water and in the U.S. And uh, I'm excited to find out more about this. I dreamed to own a home on the water one day. It may just be a dream, but it's still a good dream to have. <laughs> well, you know, the, the everybody loves the water. Everybody's drawn to the water. Quite frankly, I don't know how the people out in Kansas and Iowa uh, exist without the ocean because mm-hmm. uh, it just it, it literally does draw you there. And uh, I live close to the shore. My wife grew up on the shore uh, down in Belmar. And um, it, it, it just makes you feel good when you're down there at the beach. Uh, and that's the good part of the water, right? We, what we enjoy. And uh, there's no place like the Jersey Shore. And I don't mean those pretenders on the reality program. I'm talking about the actual Jersey Shore. <laughs> Um, yes, good to point out. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, please forget about those folks. Um, and so those are the benefits to it. And we're lucky in New Jersey because we have some of the cleanest water in the United States uh, on the shore and inland in uh, freshwater lakes and streams and rivers. That's the good news. The bad news is, of course, that there are a lot of regulations mm-hmm. that we need to keep it that way. It wasn't always that way. I grew up in the 70s and you could practically walk across the the Passaic River. It was so Mm -hmm. uh, polluted, but um, it's not the case anymore. But those regulations also restrict what you can do on or near the water. And it's very closely watched. Um, And so you have to be you have to go into it with your eyes wide open if you're going to buy property that's on or near the water. And it doesn't have to be right on the water either. Mm-hmm. It can just be close to the water and it can still affect you. Um, for the last 10 years, well, 11 years, I've sat on the New Jersey Tidelands Resource Council, uh, which is the state commission that manages the state's interest in the lands now or formerly flowed by tidal waters. Mm -hmm. So you can buy a piece of property, say, down in Long Beach Island, and it feels like it's in the middle of the the island, and yet 100 years ago, a stream ran underneath it, and the state claims ownership to that. Even though you're getting a deed for the whole property, you still may not own it. And the state may come to you today and say, you need... To buy that from us for you to refinance it or convey it uh, or use it. Uh, And that's a shock to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, So these are things that you really have to be concerned about when you're looking to purchase uh, property down uh, near the ocean or near a body of water. 
Uh, the other thing you have to be concerned about is regulation. Uh, what I was just talking about is ownership of the land where the state says, we actually own it. You never owned it. We took title back in 1776 mm -hmm. when we beat the English. Uh, but what I'm talking about is more recent regulation that says you can't do certain things near the water. You can't cut the grass. You can't put down pesticides. You can't change the topography. You can't uh, build buildings or other structures near the water. You can't put uh, sewer systems in near the water. All these different things affect the way that you can use your property. So when you look at it and you say, you say you dream about having a piece of property, you walk up and say, oh my God, this is wonderful. This is perfect. This is just where I want to be. And then you buy it. And then you find out that you can't do any of the things that you wanted to do on it. And that's a reality here in New Jersey and in many other areas of the country too. Although one of the specific things that happens in New Jersey is that the state claims anything that they ever had flowed by water. Whereas if you go to Virginia, it's only what's currently flowed. So you walk down to the water's edge and you step in the water, you're in land that Virginia owns. You step back on the shoreline, you're in land that you own. It's not necessarily the case here in New Jersey. One of the big issues recently in the past few years uh, has been what they call the uh, uh, public trust doctrine. The idea that everybody has a right to access the ocean uh, for recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. which means that you can't block off sections of the ocean, sections of the beach. Even though you buy the property right down to the water line, you can't restrict people from getting to the water. And this has caused a lot of controversy and a lot of litigation where people have actually had to create easements, which we talked about last week, that run through your property to allow people to get down to the beach. Oh. Interesting, right? It's not as easy as you think. Right. <laughs> I can imagine the taxes, though, too. Woof, how expensive are taxes on the Jersey Shore? Give me an, well, an insight. Just curious. Well, your, your taxes are based upon your property value. Okay. And uh, interestingly enough, when you go down to the shore and you look at uh, properties that might be a million dollars or two million dollars, you would think that that's the building. A lot of these houses down there are, are, are magnificent, but you might be surprised to find out that the house is usually the lower portion of the taxes, that it's the land itself really? that is the value. So you might go to Rumson and the house itself is only uh, assessed at maybe $300,000, but the land is assessed at $1.5 million. So the land is really what makes it expensive because there's only so much land near the water or on the water. So how many, much are people paying in taxes? That's where I'm confused. Wait, they're paying taxes on the home or on the land or both? Well, they, 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 they pay taxes on both. So both are, are assessed in New Jersey. The uh, Your property taxes are assessed on both your land and the improvements. Okay. They're two separate assessments. And that, that combined to make your your um, your taxes. So I live in Freehold, which is about 17 miles from the Jersey Shore. And I have about three quarters of an acre of land. And I pay about $15,000 a year in taxes. If I took this same property okay. and moved it to the Jersey Shore within, say, two blocks of the beach, that would probably triple. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. All right. Yeah. I'm 15,000 too out on Long Island, but my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'm only living on the water in the community near my house. Yeah. My friend's property, it's like $65,000 in taxes a year because they're on the water. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah. What? That's like a salary. My goodness. I know. I know. That's <laughs> your salary right there. Yeah. Uh, before you pay your taxes, that's gross. Not exactly. Next. You got to work forever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So continue. Sorry to interrupt. I was just curious. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, and the other thing is, is you don't have to be 
concerned only if you're right on the water. I mean, those bring uh, a lot of issues. First of all, whether you have what we call a defended shoreline or an undefended shoreline. Undefended shoreline is where you don't have a bulkhead. Mm -hmm. So what that allows for is something called accretion and erosion. In other words, you can lose land over time or you can gain land over time. Losing land is a problem, mm -hmm. right? Because you might have improvements out there and, and the land slowly gets taken away. Um, but if you've ever gone down to Wildwood and you have to walk about a mile to get to the beach, uh, you know that, uh, that that's what they call accretion. That's where land is continually being dumped there. And so... Never been to Wildwood. That's a great spot for the kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It's a very long uh, boardwalk with lots of stuff for the kids to do. But uh, they've actually, at this point now, put down walkways for you to walk down to the beach because it's so far to get to the actual water really? that you would burn the bottom of your feet off oh, my if you try to walk across the sand. Okay. So it's a very long way. And that's because about in the last 20 years, about 700 feet of land has been deposited there just naturally because of the movement of, of the ocean. Wow. Um, so if you have a defended shoreline, meaning, meaning you have a bulkhead, you have to be concerned about that because not only do you have to install the thing and it, it costs money to do that, but you also have to get permits to do it. You can't do anything near the shore in Jersey unless you get a permit. It's under what they call CAPRA. The law is called CAPRA. It's called the Coastal Area um, Facilities Resource Act. And so you have to go to the state and you have to apply for a specific permit so that you don't uh, disturb the natural environment. Wow. If you want to put a, uh, a dock or a, a boat slip on the water. You have to get a permit for that. And it's a process. It costs some money. It's not overly expensive mm -hmm. for the permit, but you may have to get engineering uh, consultations, uh, surveys, things of that nature. Of course, the installation of the dock itself, driving pilings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, it's a process. And so, uh, especially since the state doesn't sell land out in the water anymore. Mm -hmm. So you have to get a license. Then that means you have to pay a license fee every year. So it can be expensive. And it's not just the cost of buying the property on the water. It's the cost of maintaining the, the bulkhead and the docks uh, and the cost of the uh, installation and the cost of the permits. So it, it adds up. It's not just that... Uh, you know, sixty-five thousand dollars a year in taxes. It's it's much more than that. Wow, wow, wow! wow. Remind us, uh, Joe, how we can reach you. We're about halfway through, so just got to remind everyone how we can contact you. Sure, you can contact me. Is we actually just got a new website. So our website is uh, www.gicenj.com, and you can also contact us as at www dot forensic title expert dot com perfect thank you so much let's continue what else do we need to know so i think probably the biggest shocker to people is that um how does the state of new jersey own your property still today how if you paid fair market value for your property how can they own it well it's because the state takes the position that they've always owned it. Mm -hmm. That the person who sold it to you, who bought it from somebody else, who bought it from somebody else, never had the right to sell that property. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't always this way. Well, actually, it was always this way, but it wasn't enforced. And then there was a big case in 1967 uh, before the court, and the court came out and said, yes. The state owns all the land, not only currently flowed by the water, but any time in the past, all the way back into the 1800s, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is they filed a bunch of maps in the 70s and 80s, and a lot of people don't know that. So say your grandpa bought a property down in a Seaside Park yeah. back in the 60s. 
Well, there were no maps then. Nobody knew. When he walked up and bought it, it was dry land. Yeah. And he paid his money for it. And he thought he owned it. And then today, he goes to sell it some 50 years or more later. They do a title search and they find out that 100% of his property is in an old wow. stream. And the state says, we owned it. What? And you have to pay now, not what he paid back in 65. You have to pay today's value for the land. Wow. This comes as a huge shock to people. And uh, having sat on the council for the last two years, I've seen people who bought a property in 65 for $15,000. And today they're being asked to pay the state $500,000 to buy their property back. What? Yes. Wow. I know it seems crazy, but that is the law in New Jersey. So if you're considering buying that property down on the water, these are things you definitely have to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. You have to do your, what they call due diligence, looking at it very, very carefully and very closely. Oh, wow. That is crazy. Yeah. You think yeah. you own something and you kind of don't, and now you're owing them. I don't like it, that. It's, it's almost unconceivable. Yeah, it really is. It's hard. But it happens but every day. We listen to about, we have about 30 applications that come before us every month, every single month. In some cases, title insurance covers the cost. Some cases, oh, okay. uh, you would get a, a, a certain discounts, a considerable discount, a 75% discount. But uh, basically, if you bought the property after 1982, you're probably not going to be eligible for any discount and you're going to have to pay the full price. And you better hope that you have title insurance oh that will help you cover some of that. So is this similar to eminent domain or um, so I get confused with that. And then the condemnation, could you talk about that? So you would think it it, it is, but it's not because <laughs> eminent domain or condemnation, which is the process that the state enforces eminent domain is, is a process where the state looks at, or the town or the county looks at your property and says, you know what? The rest of the people need your property for the benefit of the entire community. Like they're gonna build a park there or they need to put a road there, things like that. That's where we see it most often. So we're gonna take your land. We're gonna pay you, the state's gonna pay you fair market value for your property, but we need this property. And that's required under the constitution. They can't just take your property. In this particular case, the state says, we always owned this property. Yeah. You never owned this property. So you have to pay us. It's exactly the opposite of eminent domain. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, continuing with that. Um, now, uh, where do you, how do you, how do you find out if they're claiming your land? Uh, do you get a notice? Do you get like so a certified mail? I, I mean, what do people don't know? Because, and they're running from it, can they? <laughs> so they do not let you know. The state does what? not let you know, right? They don't call you up. They don't send you a letter, none of that stuff. Because there's so much property that the state claims. There are maps that have been filed. Mm -hmm. And up until recently, you really had to go through another professional to access them. But within the last 90 days, mm -hmm. the uh, DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection in New Jersey, has come out with an online mapping system. So you can actually go online, type in your address, mm -hmm. and you can see whether or not your property is affected. Wow. Now, if you're going to sell your property, the title insurance company is going to do a Tideland search, an official professional search to find out whether or not the state claims any part of your property. But if you're not, you just want to find out, you can go to the DEP website and just uh, let's go type in Tidelands Maps or online Tidelands Maps, DEP, NJDEP, under Google. And, and it'll pop up and you'll be able to move around in there and search for yourself to find out if it affects you. 
in any way. What if you don't know? <laughs> Can't people go with that excuse for a long period of time? So, you know, and, and there are people, like I said, have been living there for 50, 60 years. If you're not selling your property and you're not refinancing your property, nobody's ever going to say anything. Mm -hmm. Where they will say something yeah. is if they find out that you're using the water. If you built an illegal dock, okay, uh -huh. because you're supposed to be paying a license for that or a boat lift or some other type of thing that's out in the water, they do periodically check on that. They do scan, uh, especially after Sandy, believe it or not, after Hurricane Sandy, they went and they looked at, at uh, uh, overhead uh, maps and satellite photos. Now that we have Google Earth, you can pretty much look at anything, anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. And so they did, and they sent out these notices, what they call a notice of action letter, saying, hey, you're using the water and you're not paying for it. You're on our land and you're not paying for it. So please contact us because we're going to charge you rent for using the water. And once they file those notice, notice of action letters, if you, if you don't contact them, they file that in the, in the clerk's office and it gets picked up. So you won't be able to sell your house. You won't be able to refinance your house until that's taken care of. And you'll have to pay back rent. They'll go back and find out how long your dock has been there. And they will go back however many years oh it is, goodness. 10, 20 years, doesn't matter. And they'll charge you for the rent for all that time. All right. So now what about people that live far away from the shore? Do they need to be concerned about, about water rights as well? So it, it's not so much CAFRA and tidelands issues, but what you have away from the shore uh, are um, what they call wetlands laws, freshwater wetlands laws. And that's what I was talking a little about, about in the beginning, where uh, if your air, if any part of your property has been deemed a wetland. And you don't know about that either. They don't send you a, a notification and say, hey, your property is a wetland. Mm -hmm. You can usually go to your local town and they'll have online wetlands maps and you can see whether your property is in the wetlands. Or once again, you can go to the, um, the DEP site and type in wetlands maps and see if you're in a wetland. Now, the problem with wetlands is that's all about use. It's not about ownership. They don't own your property, but they can tell you how to use it. And if you violate the wetlands areas by building into a wetlands area, they can make you remove whatever you did there. Okay. Or if you um, are dumping stuff in a wetlands area, say you, uh. you go and you cut your grass and then you dump it out in the woods because you own like maybe five acres on a lake. They'll come by and say, uh, no, you can't do that. And they'll hit you with a fine mm -hmm. for doing that. So you have to be careful if you're anywhere near the water or an area that's always damp, okay, always wet. And that mm -hmm. would be wetlands, of course. Got it. And could you talk about Superstorm um, Sandy, what that did, I mean, to the community and to so <clears> many? And how are people is you know, adjusting with that still. What are some so of the things that happened? Yeah, obviously that was 10 years ago, but wow. it, it was a uh, it was a a game changing event, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not only did it reshape the New Jersey shoreline by moving land around. Uh, we we saw down in uh, uh, down in Manaloking where it busted through and uh, submerged property. Yeah. But it also changed the flood maps. People that were never in a flood zone are now in a flood zone, which means they have to get flood insurance. Uh, oh, oh, and how hard is that? Uh, and, well, it's not hard if you're willing to pay for it's it. It's expensive. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and so obviously, depending upon what kind of flood, special flood hazard area you're in, mm -hmm. will depend upon how expensive it is. There are different zones. Some are more prone to flooding, some are less prone to flooding. But there's a, a lot, a lot of people today that are in flood zones that never were before. Now, one of the big changes, especially down further south in New Jersey, like in Avalon, 
and um, down Long Beach Island, many of the towns down there have adopted a situation where they make you file a restriction on your own property oh, wow. that says you have to comply with the federal emergency management regulations, which means lifting your house above the face flood at, uh, elevation. Okay. If you don't do that, then you'll be in violation of that. It'll prevent you from being able to uh, <clears throat> to sell your house. And a lot of people took advantage of programs that they had back at that time to lift their homes up onto stilts, uh, raise them in general, or they didn't. And if they didn't, they could find that they'll have a problem when they go to sell their property down the road. Oh my goodness. There's so much too. Oh my gosh. Maybe we should just continue renting. No, no. <laughs> I mean, everyone wants to own property. I know, I know, I know. Oh gosh. Oh. Well, that's, that's what I do. I rent down the shore and I let it be somebody else's problem. I show up, I enjoy it for a couple of weeks and I go back home. Uh, so that's one way to look at it. But if you're one of those people who really wants to be there, you have a boat, you want to be able to put it in the water and keep it in the water, then, then you want to be down the shore. And there are places, uh, there are lots of places where you can go that are, are uh, more amenable, places that are in uh, lagoon communities where the water isn't owned by the state. Uh, even though it is the water, it's not owned by the state. It's owned by the Lagoon Association. And so that's why you have to do your due diligence. You have to check these things out carefully to find out whether or not your you front on water that's owned by the state of New Jersey or not owned by the state of New Jersey. And then what the rules are in that particular lagoon community. Some are much more restrictive and some are not restrictive at all. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, we got to get moving here. My goodness. It happened so quick. Uh, tell us, uh, Joe, Gray us how we can reach you and to our listeners as well. Once again, you can contact me at www.gicenj.com or www.forensictitlexpert.com. Perfect. Well, thank you for being here again and looking forward to next week when we connect. Thanks for the information. You got me thinking now. I got to also search Wildwood. Let me just ask a question, personal question for the kids. What are some of the best plots to go for the kids? Is that like the place or is there other places in the Jersey Shore that are good for children? So, like Seaside Heights used to be cool, but I don't know. I, I haven't been down there. <laughs> I mean, I went to Seaside Heights growing up as a kid. Uh, obviously, they have a boardwalk there. They have a boardwalk in Wildwood. Um, Ocean City is a dry town. Okay. They have a, boat, a, boat, a boardwalk there. That's a great place for families. The other Ocean. place that's a great place for families, which is my favorite, is uh, Cape May. Kate May, uh, I'm writing them down. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to do some research. I'm going to take some short little summer trips this year. So bet, thanks for that. <laughs> Have a great day, Joe. We'll talk next week. All right, week. you bye take bye. care. Good Thank to see you. you. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes. 
and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.